What is going on, everyone? Hope you're all doing well today. I am coming at you from the capital of Raider Nation, Las Vegas, Nevada, for the AMD RDNA 3 press event reveal keynote with Dr. Lisa Sue and everyone in attendance. Everything has been fantastic up until this point. We've got all the details on the 7900 series of graphics cards, which is going to be launching on December 13th at a very competitive price tag. The 7900 XTX will be launching at a cool $999, while the 7900 XT will be launching at $899. Dollars Definitely competitive indeed when you consider the fact that NVIDIA recently pushed out their RTX 4090 for $1,600, and we've also got the 4080 eventually coming for $1,200, and we'll just have to wait and see on where this is going to be competitive with the NVIDIA cards, but we got all the details here today. You probably just finished watching the presentation that I sat through from Dr. Lisa Su. During the Q&A, uh, AMD was quite frank that they are competing with the sub $1,000 and below uh, price point, but based on the specs and all the information we were given on the new chiplet design and compute unit counts and the compute units and all of that stuff, it looks like it could very well be a near contender for the RTX 4090. But with that price point, it's definitely going to offer a compelling option for a lot of enthusiast gamers in the market for a new graphics card here in late 2022. Also, the card seems to be reasonably sized. It was uh, it's just like, I think it was like 10 millimeters. I can't recall the exact number off the top of my head, but I'll put the slide on screen. I think it was roughly like 10 millimeters longer than the 6950 XT, so you probably shouldn't need to go out and buy a new case or anything like that. It's also going to be using dual eight pin power connectors, so you won't have to worry about those uh, pesky 12 VHPWR connectors that have been a quote-unquote hot topic as of late. So those are some of the positives we have coming out of this presentation. Other stuff you guys might want to know is that the XTX is going to be rocking 24 gigabytes of VRAM, while the $900 7900 XT will have 20 gigabytes. Now, both of these cards are going to be using GDDR6, not GDDR6X, so that could be maybe an edge for NVIDIA there in terms of memory bandwidth and output. But definitely on the power side of things, AMD is doing some good stuff there as the XTX only has a power draw of 355 watts, while the XT is a cool 300 watts. Now, also one of the big stories with this is that they are going with a chiplet design, which has long been rumored and leaked, and we've pretty much seen everything up until this point coming to fruition and actually being accurate when it comes to the chiplet design. Having a 5 nanometer graphics compute die in the middle with 6 nanometer memory cache dies around the outside. Now that's specifically for the 7900 XTX. The 7900 XT, as they address during the Q&A, will actually have five memory cache dies. But if you physically look at the, at the GPU itself, you will still see six memory cache dies on there. But that's really just to simplify manufacturing processing and things along those lines. But at the end of the day, what it comes down to is the XTX will have the full six memory cache dies while there will be five on the $899 7900 XT. So that's something worth noting there. And it's going to be interesting to see how these cards shape up against one another as well as up against NVIDIA. There's not a massive gap in terms of compute units on these cards. The XTX is going to be at 96, while the 7900 XT will have 84 compute units at 2 gigahertz. The XTX will actually be at 2.3 gigahertz, but it can get up to 2.5. One other piece of technology that was conveniently absent in the RTX 4000 series, but is present in the 7000 series GPUs from AMD, is DisplayPort 2.1, which a lot of gamers were a little bit miffed by not being on the RTX 4000 series, but having it show up here was definitely a big topic for AMD. They really sort of wanted to drive that home considerably that DisplayPort 2.1 will be here which will offer 4K gaming up to 480 hertz or 8K gaming up to 165 hertz. Now, while right now it's not really going to be practical to be able to hit those types of resolutions in the vast majority of games outside of, you know, some specific esports titles and things, uh, it's really more so future-proofing it. So maybe when these new monitors come out in early 2023, we could maybe start seeing some of these monitors hitting the market, but really right now none of them are on the market, so it just does kind of set you up for future-proofing a little bit. But I really wouldn't say DisplayPort 2.1 is going to be a key selling point, at least I don't think it would be uh, for me, but maybe it will be for you. 
especially if maybe you're a content creator and maybe you're not necessarily trying to hit these high refresh rates for for gaming or something like that but maybe it could help with like uh like slow motion content creation so there's there's some niches there where i could see content creation uh taking benefit from displayport 2.1 but we'll you know we'll have to wait and see on that but it will be on the cards the 40 series doesn't have it so at least amd does have bragging rights on that another thing that i thought was interesting that i really didn't expect to see at the show is that there's going to be an fsr 3.0 using amd's fluid motion technology as they're calling it and they didn't really dive too much into fsr 3.0 but they're saying it could offer double the performance versus using fsr 2.0 and from the sounds of the wording and everything like that this is basically frame generation so they're essentially i can't say from the technical aspect exactly how they're achieving um, their version of frame generation and how they're going to be doing it just yet we'll probably hear about that closer to the launch of december 13th or somewhere in the middle there but for right now, uh, it just sounds like it is going to be frame generation. So that's good, though. That's, that checks a box that they're going to have something that will be a competitor to DLSS 3 or DLSS frame generation. So if we were worried about that not being in there, it does sound like AMD will have that on these graphics cards as a software feature. Now, the unfortunate part about it is that it will not be available at launch. That is something that the RTX 40 series can say that they do have is that it is available at launch and it's already available in a handful of titles. While AMD said that FSR 3 will be coming sometime in 2023. There was no spec any other specificity about it. It didn't say early 2023 or Q1, Q2, whatever. It just said 2023. So that could like literally mean anything. And for me, that's again, and buying something at launch that's not going to have the technology available right away, uh, it, it gives me a little bit of a pause. But, you know, it's going to be coming eventually. So if it's something that you're willing to wait for and you're wanting to support Team Red and also the price point, the price point is excellent. Not enough could be said about that. So that's definitely going to be a major option for a major uh, purchase decision for a lot of people. And in terms of gaming performance, we really didn't get... Uh, a whole lot out of out of AMD during this presentation, sadly. Um, the couple of graphs they showed, they compared the XTX card to the 6950 XT, and it showed about a 1.5 to 1.7 improvement in performance and just pure rasterization. And they also mentioned that their ray tracing performance is also going to be about 1.5, 1.6x faster than it was on the previous generation ray tracing on the 6000 series of GPUs from AMD. Oddly, though, they didn't show any graphs, you know, comparing up against the 4090 or even like 30 series, 3080 Ti, 3090s. I really wish, they, even though they, they're, it seems like they're sort of, you know, putting this in a place where it could very well beat the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte card and RTX eventual 4070 or whatever they do with that 12 gigabyte model. They seem to be slotting this in a perfect place to be able to compete, not only compete, but probably beat those cards with these types of specs, which are probably going to get it fairly close up near the 4090 but i do think they are going to get edged out there and you know they're not really trying to sell this as a 4090 competitor they were flat out asked about it and they said no we're competing with the thousand dollar and below uh price point uh with these cards so yeah but that's all I've got for you guys today coming from Las Vegas for this AMD event. Thank you to AMD for uh, inv inviting me out and taking care, care of everything. Um, for full disclosure, I was not paid to be at this event. As far as I know, none of the press are paid to ever be at these events. But as full disclosure, I do want to let people know that they did pay for airfare. They paid for my hotel. They fed me. And, you know, it, it's been a great time so far. So I like to just include that as full disclosure as I feel you guys are, are deserve to sort of know that sort of information um, when any sort sort of monetary exchange or somewhat of a monetary exchange is taking place basically you know paying for the travel and all that stuff but definitely doesn't affect my opinion on the product one way or the other at the end of the day i want to look at the numbers and i can't wait to see this launch on december 13th so we can compare it up against nvidia cards and really see uh where everything is going to kind of fall that way you guys can make a better purchase decision um you know come towards the end of this year and thankfully also add in board partner cards they say are planned to release at the same time as the reference model that was one of my questions i asked during the q a is if they would launch right alongside unlike you know nvidia they have their cards come out like one day before the add-in board card add-in board partner cards which is you know not great but it looks like amd is uh doing the right thing here and letting those all launch at the same time unless there's any issues with you know supply chain and all that kind of stuff global supply chain issues um with the add-in board partner cards that's a possibility 
but you know officially they're saying that it is planned to launch on the 13th so that's all i've got for you guys today let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and i'll catch you in the next video peace i'm done